this is the video for you if you, just like I was feeling not that long ago, uh, are a little anxious about what it's like to own an EV, driving, charging, taking care of it. Now, if you're really familiar with electric cars, this is probably not the video for you. So a couple of weeks ago now, we bought our used 2015 Nissan Leaf, and it's the best. I absolutely love it. But there certainly are a couple of things that are different from driving in a conventional car, things to think about. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna gather all the things that I've learned, all the tips, things that I kind of wish I knew before buying this car in one uh, giant list. So here we go. There seems to be a pretty common misconception that EVs are highly impractical, that they're not useful, that you can't drive them very far, that you can't rely on them, and that couldn't be further from the truth. Granted, if you have a car like this one, uh, an older model with a really small battery, I mean, it's true to some extent, but most newer EVs have a much wider range, like 200 miles plus. Um, and with that, uh, you can definitely drive it very normally you need to charge this at home. I mean, you don't need need, but life is going to be much more annoying if you don't have a place to charge. Ideally, you want level two charging, which is going to be much faster than level one charging. So in order to do that, you need, first of all, a place to charge and you need that work done. So you need to either hire an electrician to bring in 240 volt, um, or you can do it yourself. I made a video about that. So there's a cost there, but most likely you're going to uh, get that money back within the first year of not buying any gas. Not all charging is the same. There are three basic different kinds of charging. There's level one charging, uh, which is a standard 120 volt outlet, like any that you have in your house. That will only give you about one kilowatt. There is level two charging, um, which is a 240 volt outlet. And then you have quick charging, so CCS, or in this situation, CHAdeMO. When it comes to the quick charge, you'll get between like 50 and 350 kilowatts, depending on your car and, and the state of things. You know, you're probably going to charge your car at public charging stations pretty rarely or perhaps even never, um, especially if you have one charging at home and if you have a relatively new EV with a decent range. So let's say you have 200 miles, not like this one. I mean, this is a used uh, Nissan Leaf with a small battery. I have about a 70 miles range. But if you have one of the newer models, then 200 miles is quite a lot. So chances are you're never really going to need charging on the go. But let's say you did need to charge when you're out and about. Did you know that there is a lot of free charging available? I did not. I think it's pretty cool. Basically, you can use an app like PlugShare, find your area and you can see like what are, what's the charging available here. And it will show you exactly what type of charging, if it's free or not. In general, though, you can expect free charging at like car dealerships, some medical centers, some colleges, that kind of thing. And what's cool about them is that they are free for like anybody. There's no app that you have to install, no credit card you have to put in. At least not in my experience doing it in different places. And the other thing is like car dealerships, as far as I know, they're not like exclusive where, you know, if you have a Chevy Bolt, you could go to a Nissan dealership and charge it up there for free. There's not like exclusive where we only accept our own brand. Uh, so there's a lot of free charging available if you only look for it, which is kind of neat. Most EVs come with a portable 120 volt charging plug, like this guy here. You can just keep in your car and always be ready um, if in case of an emergency or something, you're out and you need to charge up at you know, a friend's house or something like that. This just plugs into any you know, regular standard outlet. Now, um, there is actually an option to buy an adapter so you could do the same thing with 240 volt. But let me explain. So what you need for that is an adapter and you need a 240 volt plug to plug it into. But let's say, let's say you're going to your mom's house for the day and she has a dryer in her garage. Um, and you know, you go there and you can use that outlet to charge up this car if you get that adapter. Um, or you know, you go into a friend's house and he or she's got a, like a woodworking shop. So they got 240 volts in, in the shop. The same thing applies there. You could, you know, charge up the car using the 240 volt. Um, and I mean, level two charging is, you know, 
so much more efficient than level one charging. 85%. The batteries in the car will charge up at different speeds depending on the state of the battery. Uh, so for example, if you have a battery at 40%, it's going to charge up a lot faster from 40 to like 80% compared to like from 80 to 100%. I mean, that's just how lithium ion batteries work and different EVs will have different charging profiles. But just something to realize that it's not a straight line in terms of how fast these batteries will charge up. Don't attempt to charge up to 100% at a public charging station. For the reasons I just mentioned, charging up from like 80 to 100% is going to take a, a, a much longer. And if there are other people that are waiting to use this charging station, you know, they're going to get kind of annoyed waiting, especially because it's something that is not necessary and it takes a long time. Only if there's nobody there should even consider charging up to 100%. And, you know, that might not even be a good idea. So currently I'm charged to 85%. That's the range we're trying to stay at when we're, we're charging it, unless we're planning on, on going somewhere uh, a little bit further. But you really want to try to not charge up your car to 100% all the time. The battery doesn't really like that, especially not if it's sitting around for some time. So ideally charge your battery to like 85, you know, percent, something like that. Um, on some cars, like the Teslas, for example, you can set the limit of charging either through the, the car or the app, so you don't even have to think about that. But it's gonna be different from car to car. The enemy of lithium ion batteries is heat and cold and changing the state from heat to cold rather quickly. Um, and for example, when it comes to charging, if it's really cold outside, let's say it's zero degrees, it's going to take a lot longer for the batteries to charge up. Actually, most EVs prefer to be charging in warmer temperatures, like 75 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So just be aware that um, if you're planning to charge the car up real fast uh, and you're out somewhere and it's taking a lot longer than you expected, um, that could just be because it's cold outside. <laughs> If you've never driven an EV before, it might come as a bit of a shock just how fast they are. You have this instantaneous torque, so when you hit the gas, if you're still, you go brrrr. So depending on what kind of car you were driving beforehand, this might be quite the improvement. And this is true for all EVs. They're all really fast and really fun to drive. The range that the car is telling you that you have available to drive is calculated based on how you've been driving previously. I have 85% left on my battery and 68 miles to go. So it's telling me I average a 3.8 miles per kilowatt hours. It's just something to keep in mind because if you've been driving for like, you know, 50 miles per hour for quite some time and it's telling you that you have a wide range, but then suddenly you get on the highway and you drive 70 miles per hour or you go really like a, you know, up and down landscape or you turn on the heat, the expected driving range is going to change. So it's a constant kind of changing equation. So don't like look at that as, a, as an absolute number. All EVs have regenerative braking, which means that the car recovers from some of the kinetic energy that otherwise would turn into heat and instead converts it into electricity. So the motor drives the wheels during acceleration, but the wheels drive the motor while decelerating. Basically what that means in practical terms is that you can do one pedal driving. Uh, when you lift your, your foot off the accelerator, essentially the car brakes. Not like really hard, but it starts to break. So if you're going down the road and you know a curve coming up, you can just lift off the pedal and you will get that slowing down. Okay, let's play a game. Let's not try to use the brake at all. The one thing about that is you have to think about it ahead of time a little bit. You have to kind of, it's a different kind of driving. It's like more mindful. Of course, if you hit the brake brake, you're going to come to a much harder stop but you can kind of practice to drive more and more with only the one pedal, which is kind of fun, actually. The bigger the car, the more energy it uses. And this may seem rather obvious, but uh, just because it's electric doesn't mean that it's necessarily really efficient. And in the same way, like if I fill up uh, you know, every seat in this car and, and put a lot of stuff in the trunk, I'm not going to be as efficient driving. And this is true, you know, in a conventional car as well, but I don't think you're quite as aware of it because here you're getting this constant feedback, how efficiently you are driving and all of that. And you're like looking at that information. So it becomes more visible, more like obvious in a way. 
cold temperatures is going to affect your range. So we recently bought this car. It is spring, early summer. Uh, so I know it's going to affect it when it gets colder. I just don't know how much. You know, I think range anxiety might be a bit overstated, especially if you have a newer EV. Let's say you have a 200 mile range or something like that. That's a pretty big distance to be driving around. I mean, chances are, um, unless you have a really long commute every day, um, you are going to be fine driving back and forth to work or, or doing errands or whatever you're doing with that um, amount of miles. Now, on the other hand, if you're having something like this, only 28%, let's see if we can make it home used you know EV with a really small battery I have about 70 mile uh, range um, so in that situation it's, it can be a little bit more anxious but if you have a newer EV with a, a wider range um, you're probably very rarely going to low run low on electricity you're not using much electricity unless you are actually moving, unless you're actually driving. So this is an ideal car if you sit in traffic a lot, um, if you are like in a, like a town situation, if you are you know at traffic stops a lot. Think about it this way: most EVs use about 1,500 watts when sitting idle, if the AC or the heat is on. Now, when you accelerate, you use between 50 and 100,000 watts. So in comparison, 1,500 watts is like nothing. Unless you're actually driving a distance, you're not actually using much electricity. As opposed to a gas engine that is just continuously, you know, on, even if you're sitting still. So the car is currently on. See how quiet it is? But that means that I could go to the, the drive-in movie theater right now, keep the car on, keep, keep me nice and cool inside if I wanted to do that and nobody would know that the car is on. You know, in a similar way, I could drive this into uh, the garage and you know, keep the car on if I wanted to. There's no fumes, it's very safe. Since there is no engine and no transmission, there's a lot less upkeep and maintenance. Um, you don't have to think about oil changes because there's no oil to change. No possible expensive transmission repair because <laughs> there is no transmission. I mean, obviously some things will still get worn. Some things are the same. The, the wheels turn, so the tires will need to replace. The, the brakes will wear out, um, things like that. But there's no engine seals that break down. There's no heat buildup. There's simply a lot less stress on the car. Because of that, the mileage on an EV should be looked at differently from a conventional. And this is something to keep in mind if you go car shopping. Because there is so much less stress when driving many miles in an EV, because there is less shaking, there's less movement, there is less heat, um, all those things that kind of wear down a car over time, uh, that's just not happening here. So driving many miles in an EV doesn't have the same effect. So if you're buying a used EV, you should look at the number of miles it has in a slightly different way from the way you would look at it if buying a conventional car. It's a lot cheaper to operate an EV. I mean, duh. <laughs> but if you're curious, how much um, gas would I use compared to electricity? Let's, let's do a little you know, example here. Let's take the new Mustang Mach-E nice new EV and let's compare it to a commensurate car like a traditional new Mustang. Most people drive let's say about a 10,000 miles per year. So Mustang gets about 20 miles per gallon that is 500 gallons of gas. At today's prices of about $4.50 per gallon of course this is going to vary uh, that works out to $2,250 that you would spend on gas during one year driving 10,000 miles. Now the Mach-E gets 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour which honestly is kind of low most models actually get a better uh, get better than that but it's a powerful car. Um, so let's do 10,000 miles at 2.6 miles per gallon. That's 3,846 kilowatt hours. The national price for electricity is about 15 cents per kilowatt hour. That works out to be $577. So you have 2,250 compared to like $577. So about a fourth. Now, if you were taking both of these on a road trip, what would be the answer then? Now, let's say you're taking a thousand mile road trip and now you have to pay for electricity on the road just like you pay for gas, uh, let's say 50 cents per kilowatt hour, something like that, that works out to $192. And 
today's gas prices, that would be $225. So now the difference is not quite um, as great. So it obviously makes much more sense charging at home um, or trying to find free charging stations when you're out. Newer EVs may come in handy during an emergency, like a power outage or something, because for some models, and this is going to vary depending on your EV, you can buy a directional charge port, which basically enables you to power things through your car. So let's say the power goes out and you know, oh, I have a big battery in my car sitting in the garage. You could run an extension cord and you know power your fridge or, or, or something else like that. Um, that's kind of a neat feature. Some people seem to think that there are like so many EVs out there and you're never going to find a spot at a charging station. And if <laughs> outside of like California and big cities, when you look at the numbers, um, there's not that many EVs around. I live in the Richmond area, so we, this is like a mid-size American city. And from my experience so far, there is very few EVs around. And at these various charging stations, there's almost never anybody there. Of course, this might change and this might be slightly different from area to area. But when you look at the numbers, um, there are not that many EVs in the US at this point, outside of like, California and some different, you know, larger areas. I think one of my other favorite parts about this is that you don't have to think about buying gas. Like, okay, the cost of gas is one thing, but just the, the action of having to, you know, swing by the gas station on your way home or like, oh no, I forgot to get gas. I have to get up extra early tomorrow to go to the gas station to fill up before we, we leave or, you know, that kind of thing. That's out of your equation. Like, you don't have to think about it. Um, as long as you, you know, get in the habit of always charging it at home so you don't forget about that, it's just like one less place that you have to go and think about. I think that's about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you have any tips on, you know, things that you thought were interesting, things you didn't realize before getting an EV, then please share them in the comments below. Oh, and I want to say a big thanks to our patrons for supporting the channel um, and just for, yeah, thank you so much. If you want to become a patron and encourage and support this type of content moving forward, then please check out the link in the description. I will also put links to, you know, the products that I mentioned throughout this video, um, if you're curious. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon. Bye. I almost feel like we have gone from the two car family to a one car family because we have the truck, but we're currently not using the truck. It seems like such a waste. And with all these crap gas prices going so high, I, I, I don't want to go to the gas station. Obviously, I don't want to go and uh, fill this up. So we are only driving this car at the moment, which means that we only <laughs> it's almost like a waiting list. Uh, we are three adults in this family. It's me, my husband, my mother in law and um, <laughs> everybody wants to drive the car and of course once we've driven the car we do need to charge it up for a while uh, but it's like we used to have like two cars to, that were available to drive and now we pretty much just have one car that everybody wants to drive i would love to get another electric car